fishing is a lot of fun, but many times it's the back stories behind the fishing that are the most fun. On this week's episode, we revisit a 37-year-old fishing story from a very familiar location. It's going to be a fun half hour, and I'm so glad you're with us. Let's Fish TV is on the air right now. That is a fish. Oh, man, look at this. <laughs> It's time for the only program that brings you real-time fishing reports from the Southwest region every week. Oh my gosh. Oh, look at that. Woo! This is Let's Fish. Hi everyone, I've been fishing on television as a career for more than 38 years now. And in that space of time, I've taped over 1,200 individual television episodes. First for our older Outdoor Trails series, now for Let's Fish TV with a couple of other names thrown in between. And in that space of time, I've probably spent as much time on this one body of water as any other over that whole 38 year space of time. I'd like to welcome you in just over my right shoulder to beautiful Lake Texoma. It's a sprawling lake situated right on the Oklahoma-Texas border. It's got several species of game fish in it, but we've spent more time than any other fishing for the freshwater striped bass. So on this episode, which very well could be my last episode ever taped here on Lake Texoma, I'd like to share with you some of what I've learned in 38 years of fishing this lake for striped bass. And one extra little treat, I have gone to the archives and pulled out the first and second episodes of our shows that we ever taped on this lake back in the 1980s, back in the day when I had darker and more hair. It's gonna be a lot of fun. While I'm out doing that today, I'm gonna be taking you around your local region for this week's fishing reports from our team of reporters, both freshwater and saltwater from lakes, rivers, and bays right where you live. So we're gonna take the Mercury Pro XS 250 reliable, quiet, efficient outboard engine right up the middle of Lake Texoma. The next time you see me, I hope to be tied into a striper. But right now, let's get everything started back at the studio and your weekend planner. Hello everyone, so great to see you again. Thanks for joining us. The Salooner Tables are predicting fair game fish activity on Saturday and good activity on Sunday. Peak daytime hours begin around 9.39 on Saturday and 10.33 Sunday morning. The best nighttime fishing will begin around 10.04 on Saturday and 10.58 on Sunday evening. Depending on your area, expect the sun to rise around 7.38 and set around 6.48. Evenings will be very dark with a moon that's only 8% visible. Stay with us, we've got fishing reports from across the area on the way, and I'll return with catfishing expert Chad Ferguson, who stops by to answer your Ask the Pro question. There we go. There we go, straight down, pull and drag. Oh, they fight hard. Even though these aren't monsters, they do. Scream your drag a little bit. Ooh, that's a good one. As you can see, we've made it. We made it out on Lake Texoma. Swim in my net, he missed it. And here we go for starters. There's a striper. That's what we're fishing for. Well, there we go, the spoon. And there is the opening striper for you right there. No monster, long and skinny, but a beautiful fish, a lot of good fight. And that one would be over 20 inches. We'll talk about the limits here on Texoma a little bit later, but I'm gonna let that fish go back. And I wanna get you set up on this lake in case you live in another part of the country and have not been to Texoma. The lake sits right on the Oklahoma-Texas border. It's formed by the Red River and the Washita Rivers where they come together. It's a pretty deep lake. It's got close to 100 foot of water down by the dam. The Red River Channel is what divides Oklahoma on the north from Texas on the south. The water here is pretty clear, so you do have to pay attention to the clarity of your line. You can't get away with great big braided line or something. You've got to have some fluorocarbon, some monofilament, something like that. Upper end is a little more off color. Lower end is more clear. It's got several different species of fish. It's a great smallmouth bass fishery, one of the best we have in the southwest part of the United States, but it's best known for its stripers. And I've been coming here catching these fish since, oh, probably the late 70s, something like that. But in my professional career, 
since the mid 1980s. It's one of the few places in the country where stripers actually spawn and reproduce. I'll talk more about that a little bit later. Actually looking at fish on my Lawrence Active Target, I'll show you a shot of the screen of what's below me. Those are all stripers you're seeing right there. And a lot of what they're doing is they're following my bait up and then turning away from it. So I'm having to kind of experiment with the technique to try to get these fish to bite an artificial. The guides come out here with live bait and they're usually done by eight or nine o'clock in the morning back cleaning fish with limits for everybody in the boats. My good buddy Dan Barnett that I've known for many, many years is behind the camera today helping us out and showing me some of his best spots. So we're gonna show off Lake Texoma today and give you some more of my expertise that I've learned over the 38 years of my pro career that I've been fishing here and doing television shows. Let's get rigged up, see if we can catch another one. Hey, I think when you hit this point of the year here in Oklahoma, it's easier to predict where you should be fishing versus forecasting what the weather's gonna be and whether you should wear a coat or short sleeve shirts. Charles Jewell says that a good smallmouth bass bite going on at Lake Murray. He's catching them the way he likes to do on his little twin tail craw bait, rigged on a jig head, green pumpkin color variations, and catching those fish main lake areas right on the bottom, six to eight to 10 foot deep. Leon Adams had a great outing catching good quality white bass and hybrids in that two to three pound range. They were fat and they were sassy. They gave him a load on his light crappie gear. His best luck came on the Bobby Garland Baby Shad, live mineral color rigged on a 1 16th ounce jig head going right up against the shoreline. Catfishing is good at Call Lake. You can catch them in the channels on live and cut bait, but you can't catch them if you don't go. There are some better fish down there. Look at this on my active target. All those fish, every time I pull it up, they follow it up. Here he comes. He got it, he got it. I watch those fish chase this bait up and, and then drop it back down on them. And sometimes they hit it on the fall and sometimes you've got to crank it up like they're, well, that's a decent one, like it's going to get away from them. It's going to flop him aboard. All right. Texoma, ladies and gentlemen. Let me tell you something about Lake Texoma. This is one of the most resilient lakes I've ever fished in my entire life. This lake has undergone hell beginning in 1987 with a flood that was of epic proportions, four 100 year floods since 1987. Muddy chocolate red water. It's just gone through some horrific circumstances. They hold the water in this lake so that it won't flood everything downstream down the Red River. But this lake comes back time and time again over such a long history. Year in and year out, Texoma is one of the most consistent producers of any lake I've fished all across the southern United States, producing good, solid stripers like the one I just caught. Let's Fish TV is proudly backed by Lose, Feel the Difference, Mamba Boats, Ride with Pride, Strike King, Taiwan On, Glacier Glove, Stay Outdoors Longer with our gloves, hats, and shades, Fishing Specialties, makers of the premier mount assembly for live sonar. Oh yeah, much better, much nicer fish. That's a bigger one. That's a bigger striper. All right. Come up here, buddy. That's a hard pull. I hope I don't have him foul hooked. I hope he's hooked right in the mouth and he's just a better fish. Oh yeah, much better. Much nicer fish. Easy, darling. That one's actually giving me a little run for my money. I'm gonna open up my net while he plays, while he tires himself out. We're on Texoma today, everybody. Catching striped bass. And there's a better one. All right, and here you come, buddy. I was trying to catch a better one. We've caught tons of fish today, by the way. I mean, numbers wise, today's been an incredible day already. 
and I finally caught something with a little more shoulders on it for you right there. Again, no monster by any stretch, but just a good solid striper. And uh, I mentioned about the reproduction of these fish. This is one of the few lakes in the country where these fish will actually spawn and reproduce themselves. They were stocked here originally in the mid 1970s, only twice, and then they took hold. They run up the Washita and Red Rivers, they spawn in the current, and they've reproduced here ever since. Now the numbers will vary from year to year, but they're always here. They've maintained this population throughout all these years, the 38 years that I've been fishing it. I'm gonna bring him right over here and slide him back in the water. That would be a definite over, one over 20 inches. But we're gonna, that's a long fish too. That fish is 25, 26 inches. I'm gonna tail him and away she swims right back down there. I'm catching these fish today in 38 to 40 feet of water and I'm watching them on my active target, my Lawrence active target, and I'm reeling that spoon up through them. So I fish for stripers all over the country, all the way to Georgia, Alabama, Tennessee, great striper fisheries over there. But they don't reproduce nearly as well and they're stocked by wildlife departments, raised in hatcheries, stocked in all those lakes. But here at Texoma, they just don't need to. There are giant schools of thousands, tens of thousands of stripers. In fact, yesterday evening, right at sundown, I'm telling you, three or four acres of fish came up just out and you can see I'm out in the middle of the lake here and three or four acres of fish came up just schooling all around me now they were little bitty stripers little juveniles but they were spawned here probably last year came back down the lake they've lived here all summer and they're going to follow the pattern so it's a great reproducing lake and one of the few in the country where they don't even need to stock them they just reproduce themselves very interesting fact I'll tell you something else about strappers coming up next, but uh, I'm gonna get re-rigged up here and see if I can catch another one. Hi everybody and welcome to this week's Lone Star Lakes brought to you once again by the good folks at HB Hunting Products. Their easy reach feeders and their blinds are truly built to last a lifetime right here in Texas. Check them out, HB Hunting Products. Now this week, we've come to beautiful Lake Fork to catch some bass. Obviously, we're fishing in some timber. We're about eight feet deep right now. We're gonna start the morning with top waters. Then we're gonna go to our mid-range baits, your yum dingers and your spinner baits, then finish it up with a jig. And we're getting into that season where the jig and pig will be very popular on Lake Fork. Use about a half ounce jig, black, blue, or go with your green, brown colors and work those around timber, especially the laydowns. That's this week's Lone Star Lakes. Check us out on Facebook, Lone Star Lakes. Let's Fish TV is proudly backed by Mercury. Go boldly. Lorenz, America's number one fish finder. Gulf Shores and Orange Beach, Alabama. Plan or book your fishing charter at orangebeach.com. Motor Guides Tour Pro with GPS Anchor, powered by passion. Coastline Trailers, built by fishermen for fishermen. And mouth on a spoon. All right, just a solid fish for you right there. Good solid box fish. down he's bumping it he's bumping it real 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 really got it <laughs> that is so fun welcome back to lake texoma everybody well we're having a lot of fun today just catching a lot of numbers of striped bass this one actually feels a little bit better than some of those others there he comes a little bit better all right i'll take it i will take it Okay, and he hooked it just where I like them to hook it right in the top of the mouth on a spoon. All right, just a solid fish for you right there. Good solid box fish. You can keep uh, two over 20 inches and uh, my good buddy Dan Barnett's behind the camera right there. How many under? 10, 10 under 20 and two over 20. There you go, 10 total. No more than two can be over 20 inches. I'm gonna get it right sooner or later. That one might push 20 inches or so. Well, let me uh, tell you
tell you something else. So I'm, I promised you some vintage video here, and this I'm going to keep from try to keep from choking up here because this is probably my last episode of television on this lake. Now it won't be the last time I'm back for sure, but out of all the 38 years I've done this, I've probably taped as many shows on this lake as I have anywhere in the country. And I've learned a lot about the striper fishing here, but I learned a lot the very first time I ever came here. And it was in the mid 1980s, around 85, 86. And a gentleman named Floyd Mabry brought me out here. You might recognize the name, he's a legend. He was the originator of the old bomber lure company. Remember the old bomber deep diving crankbait? That's what I grew up fishing. So he brought me out here in the mid 1980s and showed me how to catch him on what today would be called a swim jig. So there's Floyd, and he was already a, an older gentleman even by that time, and he's since passed away. But you can see him really, he got us on a school of stripers and just we just wore him out. One right after the next, you can see I had actual hair at the time, and it was actually dark and kind of long. It was a cold day, and we just wore the stripers out. Floyd is a pioneer in the striper fishing business, especially on Texoma. He is the single greatest legendary name of my lifetime on this lake, and I had the privilege of getting to fish with him the first time I ever came here. So there was the beginning of my Texoma career. Then the next year, I actually came back out here. The lake was completely flooded. All the marinas were underwater, boat ramps underwater. And I brought John Dutton, who was a defensive tackle for the Dallas Cowboys, with me. He was drafted by the Baltimore Colts, played a few years for them, then came to the Cowboys, finished out his 14-year career with the Cowboys. But we caught a bunch of fish as well on very flooded conditions. Resiliency is the name of the game with this lake. It comes back every time. But even in a big flood, we caught some great fish. And in fact, we finished our day that day with one really big one. You can see us all gathered up there holding up that one good trophy fish that we caught. This lake has produced some really big stripers over its long history. But there's your look at some old mid 80s vintage video from the beginning of my career, the outdoor trails days. And we finish it up here today with the let's fish days with 1200 episodes of fishing television in between. A lot of fun, a lot of memories. Even one of my best memories with one of my long term, uh, long time buddies, Dan Barnett, who guided here for 100 years. Good stuff right there from the 80s on outdoor trails and a pretty nice striper number. Hey friends, Captain Kevin Broussard here with this week's Let's Fish Report coming to you from Hackberry, Louisiana, right here at Cajun Paradise Charters. First off, I want to talk about Sabine National Wildlife Refuge and Like I Seen Refuge closing on the 15th of October. They won't reopen until the spring. Also a reminder, flounder season is closed for all the people going saltwater fishing. That'll reopen December the 1st. On the saltwater side of things, we are starting to get some little fronts coming through. Tell you what, the first couple days after front, fishing's generally really tough and slow. But I tell you what, the next few days after that, lots of birds working speckled trout, redfish schools, lots of fish getting caught. Live shrimp, soft plastics, eighth and quarter ounce jig heads seem to be the key there. For old Cajun Phil, I'm Captain Kevin Broussard saying happy fishing. May God bless and we're gonna see you next week. Let's fish. Watch our latest episode or catch up on past episodes on our website at letsfishtv.com. Be sure to hit the subscribe button on our YouTube channel, like us on Facebook, and follow us on Twitter for new fishing videos every day. And download the free Waypoint TV app to get all the latest episodes every week on your phone, tablet, computer, or smart TV. Let's Fish TV is proudly backed by Academy Sports and Outdoors, making it easier than ever to gear up and have fun out there. Visit Mississippi, Wanderers Welcome, Power Pole, Total Boat Control, Balls Out, Made in the USA, Heavy Duty Mounts for your fish finders. Welcome back everyone. Let's get right to your Ask the Pro question for this week. Greg would like to know, should I use two hooks for catfish? Good question, Greg, for an answer. We asked catfishing expert, Chad Ferguson. In most cases, using a single hook is gonna be your best bet. One liter, one hook. The exception to that is gonna be if you're fishing for trophy catfish or a larger catfish and you're using really big baits. Oftentimes, what'll happen is the fish will bite, 
pull down, and then they'll let go. Those are what we call short strikes. If you're getting tons of short strikes over and over with those big baits, then a great option is to add a second hook, but on the same leader. And that's one of the few times that I really recommend using two hooks on one catfish rig. Thanks so much, Chad, for your knowledge. If you want some help from one of the pros too, simply go to letsfishtv.com. Follow that Ask the Pro link to submit your question. Here's today's Right Stuff, presented by Academy Sports and Outdoors. We have made it safely back to the boat ramp, and it's time right now for the Right Stuff, brought to you by Academy Sports and Outdoors, the right gear to catch stripers like the ones we caught today at Lake Texoma. Couple of pieces of critical gear that I don't talk enough about, beginning with the Motor Guide Tour Pro Trolling Motor. This is the top of the line, extremely durable, extremely powerful, extremely reliable top end trolling motor that I actually helped beta test in its formative years and it has performed unbelievably well and I really needed it out there on Texoma. That's big water and once you find one of those schools you need to be able to lock down on it and that motor will lock you down on a GPS spot, a waypoint and keep you in about a five foot diameter circle right on top of it and it's got all the power you need to hold you even in a big wind. The other piece of gear I use today is my fishing specialties mount. This is the mount that I use to mount the Lowrance Active Target Transducer on. The actual transducer is here at the very bottom with the cable that runs up through the handle of the fishing specialties mount system. I can actually steer this any direction I want to, 360 degrees, to watch for those schools of stripers. And if you get in big waves or you hit a stump and this thing were to break, it's got a magnetic breakaway bracket that'll simply break away under too much pressure. You can simply put it right back, lock the magnets right back into gear, and go on about your fishing. You can see all of the information about the Fishing Specialties Bowducer Mount System, their website that you see on the screen. Every day that I'm home, I watch something interesting and kind of funny unfold in my neighborhood. The mail person in the mail truck comes down the street putting mail in the mailboxes, and immediately when he or she pulls away from that mailbox, the owner of the house will be right behind them, grabbing that mail and standing in the driveway, sorting through it to see what's there. And this repeats itself over and over, all the way down almost every street. It's as if people have this built-in awareness of looking forward to somebody knowing who they are, knowing their name, they have their name on that piece of mail. Well, what if I could tell you some even better news that I've learned in my lifetime, that there's the creator of the universe that knows my name, knows who I am, knows everything about me, has a good destiny for me, and he loves me more than I could possibly imagine. That is great news as far as I'm concerned, and if you wanna know more about that news, just go pick up any Bible, turn to John chapter three, and you can read all about it. I hope you've enjoyed as much as I have my trip down memory lane as I've reminisced over 38 years of fishing Lake Texoma, looking back at that old vintage video from our outdoor trails days. There's no telling how many striped bass we've caught over the years on our shows right here on this lake. And if you'd like to book your very own guide trip here, you can do that at Guaranteed Guide Service. You can contact them. The information you see on your screen, Dan Barnett started this back in the 70s. Jacob Orr has come on board and several of their other great guides. They've got all the boats, the tackle, the bait, everything you need to come out and have a great time catching stripers like we have for 38 years at beautiful Lake Texoma. We'll see you next week. Until then, I'm Barry Stokes saying be safe, have fun. Let's fish everybody. Bye-bye y'all.